This program was made possible in part by the continuing contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. There is no discrimination. It does not know a face. They don't have the same like social abilities. There's not just something uh, like strep throat. How severe those disabilities are really range widely across the spectrum. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Peden. I normally don't introduce an episode of Autism, The Wall That Knows No Limits, but this case merits an exception. In part three, you saw how two autistic children were benefiting from efforts to increase autism awareness in the community. Well, we had so much unused footage, we decided to take what was left from part three and form a brand new story, which is what you'll see in part four. In this episode, you'll get to see the backstory behind Turner and Tyler and how autism has affected them and their families, as well as some strategies used by autism experts to help people on the autistic spectrum develop. These are their stories. It wasn't a, a shock to us that he was autistic because we kind of thought that maybe that's kind of what it was. So um, I guess we kind of knew. We kind of knew that um, something was different about him. Um, we just didn't know what it was. We brought it up to our pediatrician after family kind of, you know, kind of made a few things. And not just family, but like some of our friends. He always asked people questions and stuff like weird questions. I just have to watch him so closely because, you know, in a split second he'll be gone. If we play outside and then we go back in for two seconds, he wants to do it, do it again if we stayed out there for about an hour. I notice sometimes if I say something, Tyler will become upset, you know? And I, then I feel bad, like, you know, don't get mad, you know, I, that's not how I meant it. Each kid <laughs> learns differently and um, acts differently and thought maybe, you know, this is just, you know, just who he is. Persons with autism spectrum disorders represent a rapidly growing segment of the uh, developmental disability community. You might not understand, you know, a lot about it and how, how it affects what, how, how it is affecting the person. When Tyler first went to school, there wasn't really much, you know, kids don't really know when they're younger, but I think like last year is when we really saw a change in how kids kind of react to him at school and stuff, and even neighborhood kids. When they're laughing, he thinks they're laughing at him, and I don't think that, you know, that's what they're laughing at most of the time. It's just that's how he interprets it. It's hard for him to pick up on that. that it's just a joke, but he's getting better at it. I'd be like, this kid's always mean to me, da 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 da. And it's like, well, Tyler, someone's being mean to you. What do you do? We kind of tr talk through the process. Um, but then it's like, we're not there, so we're not really sure what's exactly going on. So it's hard. It's not unusual for persons with Asperger's, for example, a student with Asperger's who's in a junior high situation. It's not unusual at all for them to begin to feel that they're ostracized just a little bit. I think it's still hard for him um, integrating with other kids. He does have some difficulty with that social aspect. We're still kind of learning how the community is going to be accepting him. You have to move from people being aware it exists to actually increased understanding and I think we have an opportunity to move forward in that area now. You have to kind of <clears throat> approach it in a different way than you would, you know, with your other friends. Uh, we just tried to learn a little bit more about it because we really didn't know anything about it. Each family has been a little bit different mm -hmm. and I think it's been harder for like both of our parents. I didn't really understand what autism was at the time so I kind of had a hard time understanding, you know, some stuff. If you look um, at the general public, to them it's autism. It's all kind of autism. 
but in fact there are different characteristics associated with um, subgroups within the autism spectrum. From a parent standpoint, you know, I, I think it's very difficult. I think it's more with the grandparents where it's been maybe a little bit harder um, to understand and kind of relate. I think everyone, though, in general was really pretty positive. It's like they just treat Tyler like he's a regular kid. As I got older, I started to notice what autism was, so I understood a lot more. We're excited to provide that information to our community and really committed to helping educators and families and therapists know as much about autism spectrum disorders as they possibly can. I happen to know Mary. Uh, who is the director. So when um, I retired, she and I talked, and she felt that there was some things that I could do with the Autism Society with my background in teaching, and that was to develop Eagle's Nest, which is a social skills groups for children with Asperger's, fun Asperger's syndrome and high-functioning autism ages 8 to 15. There's classes um, that we've taken or I've taken more and then like when Tyler does go to Eagle's Nest there's a parent group so it's great. I've had Tyler for the past two years um, in the social skills groups. There's like a parent advocate and she's got children that are both autistic and then the parents that are involved and so that's nice just to be around other parents and kind of just say, oh yeah, we deal with that too, or certain situations. Um, so we've learned a lot. Many children have difficulty with loud noises or um, they don't like being in a small room or being in a crowd or being too close to people. So we work on things like that. Each Eagle's Nest class is <clears throat> on a different topic. And like one of the first ones he went Two was on bullying, and he definitely was able to, within six weeks, I mean, he was, it almost got to the point where it's like, now everybody's bullying you, and it's like, no, Tyler, no, everybody's not. But he was able to definitely pick up on things. We are here to answer questions or um, share information. They've got a great lending library there with books that, you know, we've taken home and read. So I think it's helped him also, just being away from us and being him, you know, as an independent child. It's much easier the earlier you are, you know, to, to bring a learner uh, into a social group. We do try to, you know, just tell them, no matter what, kid, there's going to be kids and people in life that are going to be mean to you and not nice. And so we're just trying to teach him the right way of, you know, processing those things and interacting with kids and how you handle yourself in certain situations. I'm just wondering how, how um, our interact, how we interact older because uh, when we get older because we've interacted different as he got older. Every once in a while, I kind of think how things will be like for them when they get older because um, you wonder if him being so attached to Devante is Devante gonna grow up and be so independent and so involved with his life that he can't really relate to Tyler. I want him to be able to join sports and do things that other kids are able to and it's just hard for him to function in a setting like that. Sports is something that can bring kids together and you know it'd be easier to interact with them in that way instead of a you know it's still a social setting but it's still you know it's a lot easier you pass me the ball. You don't know how much Tyler is going to develop you know so I think kind of as a fear that's that's probably one of them. We've got nieces and nephews and you see kind of like how they, you know, have friends at school and they're going to birthday parties and stuff like that. And so that's the thing that's hard. There's kids that are going to be, after 18, they're going to have to be cared for and taken care of and different programs and it's going to be affected. All of us are going to be affected by it. And I think that he has enough interest in certain things like cars that he'll find something within that area that he'll really enjoy. We weren't really sure how Tyler would interact with a new sibling, a new baby, mm -hmm. and he was wonderful um, and has done very well mm -hmm. as a big brother. When they are together, there is no difference. She really doesn't see 
too much of a difference. Mira is a very smart girl too, but she's, I don't think she doesn't, to her, it's like Tyler's her big brother and there's no difference. She has no clue. I mean, cause maybe they don't spend that much time together. There's times where she's like, I want someone to play with cause he might not be interacting with her the way that she wants him to. Cause he'd rather go downstairs. The basement's his domain. You know, let me go down there and relax and be by myself and he's content where she wants to, you know, I want a playmate, I want someone to play with me, why won't Tyler play with me? For him developing that, you know, it just, it's gonna, it takes, you know, school, family, I mean, you know, it's kind of like that saying, it takes a village to raise a child. I think in this case, it's definitely true. One day you'll see, oh, he, you know, he's doing very well, and the next day it's like, well now, it, we're back to step one. Because with Tyler, you know, he's such a follower that it's like, oh, okay, I'll... He's not trying to be a bully, but then it's like, oh, if one kid's probably teasing another kid, he'll follow along with that kid that's teasing somebody. And it's like, we try to tell him, you know, that's not okay. It's so easy to get frustrated and, and all those things. And um, they're just so supportive and they do such a good job with them. Hopefully it just gets, you know, out there and more people understand. I kept asking people, Is this, could it be autism? Are there signs that you see? Are there any red flags? That means if you were a parent and you felt um, that your child um, wasn't beginning to speak and they were uh, 15, 16, 17 months of age, and if you saw them engaging in what you perceived as some stereotypic behavior, or if you call their name from behind them, they don't turn and look at you. And you don't see them beginning to point to things that are of interest. Uh, I would immediately look up my director of special education in the school district that I resided. We were not probably as shocked as I would have thought we would have been, and we weren't as devastated. Because we suspected that was a possibility, I think we had already started to kind of get our mind around it. We now are beginning to have the capability to do really good early identification of kids with autism. They, they talk a lot about a window and I, I, you know, of like a window of working with your child and helping them out. And I, I, I think that is almost intimidating because then parents think, well, I only have a short amount of time to get it all in. If we identify kids at two as having autism spectrum disorders. If you look one year later, about 94% or so of those kids will continue to carry the diagnosis after a year. I think initially when he, when he would have one of his episodes where he'd act up or have a meltdown, when, you, when you're not sure what it is, maybe you think he's just being a, a, you know, a rebellious little child or, or a disobedient little child or stubborn or whatever. And, and so I think, I think we, I, I, I try to be more understanding in those situations. If he does something that's not quite socially appropriate that we're working on, or um, if he, like he will be more likely to retreat. And if he has a hard time, he'll be in the fetal position on the ground. He won't act out, but that's how he reacts. So, you know, I can say he's dealing with this and it just kind of makes people a lot more Understanding. What we do know is that with kids who have autism, the earlier the instruction starts, the more prolific the outcome. We change our life quite a bit to try to adapt to his needs, not to overwhelm him and put him in situations where he can't be successful. People wouldn't understand maybe why we kept on a routine. So it's like we were invited over somewhere and it was nap time. It's like we're going to do nap time first and then we're going to come over it does affect the way you approach different things. It has to. And I th hopefully I think it made us better parents in that regard. I know every case is different, but it does give me definitely something to kind of cling to and hope for. And in the meantime, I'm just hoping that <laughs> he can tie his shoes. This isn't just now the concerns of schools or social services or physicians. I think it's everyone understands that People with autism spectrum disorders need some uh, support and consideration. This is still your child. You know, you've noticed 
his personality, with the, the idiosyncrasies of the personality, whatever, they're still there. They're still the same. Um, it just may help you approach how to deal with some things a little better. Some of the more informative places to get information are National Institutes of Health, Center for Disease Control. Both of these organizations have good factual information. That seems to be the way Jenny deals with things is, okay, we have to work, we have to deal with this, but she just takes in and gets as much information as she can. I got a really nice email about the 10 best things about autism, and it was taking the positive spin about autism. So you can say, well, my kid has OCD, or you can say he's passionate about things. And the fact that people who are on the spectrum rarely lie because they just don't see the point of it and they don't play mind games. That is Turner. I mean, this list, I'm like, that's him. He has a wonderful, beautiful memory and he doesn't forget anything. So uh, TV shows were just coming back to me like I was watching them. He would see words on menus, on the, on the, the TiVo, on the screen. And he'd be identifying television shows. And I just, we couldn't, we couldn't believe it. And, and it would be like, not on the screen for literally a split second. What was the name of the show? Cyber Chase. Cyber Chase. And yeah. he saw it and he said it out loud and, and she heard him. She goes, wait a second, go back. And sure enough, I didn't even hear him say it, but he, he caught it that quickly. He saw the, let, the same letter group in the word and he, he was again already efficient surfing around PBS kids on the computer. He's just crazy smart on the computer. Just crazy smart. I mean, all I do is I, I move the computer for him because it's too heavy for him to move the laptop. But after that, he does everything himself. He knows the password and he's known it forever. And he, he pulls up the internet and he goes to favorites and he pulls up his you know, PBS kids. He's like a little GPS system too yeah. because he has just this internal map and so even when we were about a year and a half he would know where we were going and where, if we should turn left or if we should turn right if we were going to grandma and grandpa's house so you couldn't pull anything past him. There may be experts in the area of communication like myself but they're kind of an expert about their kid. With Turner we found that too that people that are willing to not I guess get overwhelmed by hearing oh he has autism um, if they give him time and attention, he just opens up. Yeah. But you, you, you sit back and you wonder, well, why does he warm up to this person and not that person? But then if you observe how the person interacts with him, these people get down on his level and they actually listen to him and, and, and they participate in things that he's trying to show them versus other people just kind of give him the pat on the head and move along. And when people give them their true attention and try to interact with them, he responds to it. Currently, I think we tend to look at a lot of the behaviors that these individuals do or behaviors that they use to help themselves self-regulate their behavior. And I actually now kind of sit back and observe how people interact with him and how he reacts to them and how he responds to them. And it's, it's kind of interesting. And he, you can tell there are certain people that he actually kind of develops a relationship with. I don't know what um, he will be like. I, I think the biggest thing I look forward to is um, possibly having like a real conversation with him. You, you can tell he wants to, but he's not sure how to interact with someone. And like Jane said, just having the desire thing is a big thing. Because I don't think you can teach the desire really. He's reading facial expressions a lot better, yeah. so you know he'll come up to me and say, are you sad, mommy? Are you sad? What makes you sad? And it's those little things that we see light at the end of the tunnel that, you know, we're going to be able to, inter you know, have an emotional interchange and actually have a conversation where we're going to, you know, and that, that, that we're getting closer and closer. to. It's the amazing uh, just what the, the amount of patience and the amount of support that, that those families put out and give. Um, and it, it's, it's, in, it's inspiring. I mean, it's hard to say, but, you know, you probably as a year goes by, you know, and see how he does with school. And as five years go by, you may start to see what, you know, even more what his strengths are. Based on a little bit that we've seen now, he seems to have strengths with understanding technical things, computers and things like that. Don't try to do it all in six months either. Pace yourself. It's a, it's going to be an ongoing, lifelong thing where we're just going to be helping him in some way or another. And we have high hopes for Turner. Um, but you could really get yourself all burned out trying them all at once. And then if you do that too, you don't know what's working. It's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. And I also thought, you know, when you, you know, she's come across certain moms that kind of, that's 
kind of their way of dealing with it is that they're just going to do everything gung ho, and they're going to cure their child. And you know, I, I just don't know in the long run if that's necessarily the best approach. They should be very observant and very prepared not to worry about taking too much of professional's time. Make an informed choice of what your child can handle and, and then do those things and maybe you can add gradually to that. But to throw everything at once at that, at that kid is, man, that's, that's a lot to ask. We have become just incredibly patient with Turner. And what I try to do is I try to figure out how is he thinking how does he learn? Then I can understand why he's anxious in certain situations. There's a really great information explosion occurring out there uh, throughout the United States and in other countries. There are lots of opportunities to work with individuals who have autism spectrum disorders. There's actually a whole group of autism kids that um, kids with autism they have at my school called the Learning Center and there's a lot of them and um, we read with them every once in a while and some some of them have different types of autism and um, other than Tyler but they're really happy when we read to them because I guess most of them had really hard lives. We've developed a number of programs. One is we have summer camp for kids. We serve over 250 kids in uh, residential camp settings in northern Minnesota. We started a camp for children with Asperger's and high functioning autism that um, the other camps don't quite address. The, um, our camp, the kids have to be going to Eagle's Nest at least one session and then um, Camp Courage has offered their site in Maple Lake, Wisconsin, um, Maple Lake Minnesota. We have day camps uh, during the uh, summer also, and we have weekender camps during the school year. These days it's very easy to use um, media uh, in classes, so some of the tools that I've just been talking about in terms of video clips are easily incorporated in classes. In an event like we're having today here where uh, people are, you know, a, there's a public event and people are encouraged to attend the event and part of the purpose of the detail salon is to increase awareness and that's just great. It's a growing problem that we're aware of. Um, we also have a couple of our staff members that have uh, that li live with autism in their families. We also try to identify a range of sites that are serving kids with autism so that in classes students have an opportunity to go out, spend time observing on site. There are all kinds of resources in our community where families can take their kids for therapy and support. Two semesters ago I had a couple of students working with families um, in their home, uh, implementing activities that corresponded to school programs that were being implemented, just extending them in the home. We've partnered with the um, Urban Boat Builders, which is um, an agency in St. Paul that builds canoes and skiffs by hand. And uh, what the teens are going to do is build a skiff by hand. So when there are kids in a group, they have to work together. They have to have a commitment to um, finishing the project. Um, even though they may not enjoy working, they may enjoy um, working alone better, but um, it's a group project and I think it's a very unique and wonderful experience for the teens. In Minnesota, we really have become a nonprofit that's committed to supporting individuals in our community and that's been our focus. Students bring in information um, constantly. <laughs> To me, it seems like there are always um, articles in the newspaper. Because um, autism seems to be more on the forefront where, you know, they're talking about how many more kids have been diagnosed. It, it's nice that you can understand, you know, what, what it means and what families really need to go through. Last semester, a student brought in a clipping um, related to, the, to using um, video modeling to teach new skills to um, some little kids. But unless you're in that situation or close to it, 
you have no idea what it takes. If people want to learn more, we are there to tell them. I think the more people we tell, the more real it is. One really fantastic um, area of instruction for a lot of those kids has been augmentative communication. So uh, establishing the use of small graphic symbols, whether they're pictures or line drawings or a combination of those for individuals who, for whatever reason, aren't able or choose not um, to speak. We have uh, behavioral psychological services at our office. We have a licensed psychologist who can uh, help families if they're having challenges with rearing their children. The parents have a support group and meet while the children are in group, but the parents can support each other in maybe some situations where uh, that they may have be having difficulty with. Other parents have already been through it and can offer some suggestions or support. You need to be aware of the characteristics, but when you're planning intervention for those folks, each individual, you figure out what they're currently doing and what should happen next, and you just kind of keep plugging away. And sometimes in the whole process, the child is never considered. You know, what about the schedule and everything he or she is trying to process and deal with? We'll work with a district, for example, an early um, childhood special ed program, and we'll develop a project with their entire early childhood special ed program. I think some kids um, don't really understand it, so, you know, they don't know what autism is, and so they're wondering what's wrong with them. And I have to explain to them a lot of times. Since I know Tyler a lot, I understand how it affects him. Well, I'm interested in establishing skills to a system that then I can begin to fade out, but I've established some competencies and skills that will remain. We do a lot of public education programs, and that's really the thing we started with. Because when I came to the Autism Society in the early 90s, I thought, what in the world will we do? Does anyone care about this? There's no way we would know a fraction of what we know if Turner wasn't on the spectrum. I have uh, a nephew who has autism spectrum disorders. We also run support groups for parents and have a variety of support groups that we do. The thing that I would like to see even a little bit more is more coursework integrating regular educators um, with special educators. I've always been so curious and just wanting to find someone who is an adult that has it because where are they? It's, there's a few that you know about, but I'm like, what is their life like? What are they doing? What have they achieved? We have to move from just this now being a familiar term that people know it exists and, and not be something that's terribly rare to really an understanding of how you might support an individual with autism in an employment situation, how you might include a child with autism in uh, community activities. They're similar, but yet they're so different. Mm -hmm. it's just... Every case is very individual. Every job. You need to be patient. You know, you need to just understand um, what some of their, their needs are. People will continue to say uh, things like, you know, that the students with autism in my school are, and they can name these students off and understand them as an important part of the school. This program was made possible in part by the continuing contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.